So this is our Bayside Fleetwood. It's a, a 2007, and here are some of the modifications I've made. Uh, well, reflective solar bunk covers are a must in the summer, and as are fans, and I replaced all the bulbs with LEDs uh, just to save on battery power because we do a lot of dry camping. So same thing on the interior. Uh, I also added um, some additional power ports to the lights and I also added extra power jacks over the windows too so we have these fans and other accessories. The outdoor light I added a uh, different switch and some resistors so that we could get a high and low. Um, the resistor is actually two in series and it just drops the voltage on the low position. So this is what the low setting is like and then it gets brighter on the other position and that's great when uh, you just kind of want to have some ambient lighting without attracting every bug in the campground. This is like a little nuisance thing is just finding where those buttons line up with the holes so just draw a line along the pole with the marker. Here's our kitchen we've got a uh, sink with a cutting board we went with a, uh, a long neck faucet extension and I added like a just a little storage tray with some holes in it to catch the drips and redirect them back into the sink. And uh, the cutting board I cut down to fit and added some rubber feet that fit inside the lip of the sink to secure it. The stove is easy to blow out when it's on low, so I added a barbecue igniter that's battery powered. So I can just push a button and relight it if I go too far. Uh, so there's an igniter on each of the burners. And uh, that's all underneath. And there's the igniter assembly is mounted uh, on a little galvanized plate I riveted to the side. And I relocated the battery underneath the sink. And we also got a little hanger there for a towel I didn't really talk about that's handy. Our shelving system gets a lot of use and we really like it. It's pretty simple. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It packs up pretty, pretty compact. Um, you know, you've got two shower curtain uprights um, with some fittings on the ends, the shelf standards. Uh, I got the clamp end there on the right hand side from Lowe's along with the fittings and that's just epoxy to the end of the shower curtain rod. And that just snaps right down onto the handle that swings our galley up into position. And on the ceiling, we need something to secure it because the roof does wiggle, you know. I mean, it's just held up by four posts. So uh, if you don't have cups up there, these are curtain rod cups. Um, if you don't have that, those rods aren't going to stay in place. Um, then just clamp the shelf slot rails to that and hang them up. LED lighting every place. And I created some little accent lights that kind of uh, make things feel really warm and cozy. And I had to uh, basically open up the area that clamps onto the bulb so that I could slide these things down into it. Um, and they've got dimming, so on off and uh, adjustable brightness, which is really nice. I actually put a lot of time into researching those parts. Uh, a little angle iron on the slider for the door helps us raise and lower that without trouble. And some guide rivets to uh, keep those locks in place. And, the PEX lines are a very weak spot, so I replaced those for the shower on the slide out and under the sink. And put wire shelving in the back bumper area to store things. Uh, gauge and a second tank for the propane. Uh, replaced the anode on the hot water heater. That's a service thing you got to do. I put exhaust fans on the refrigerator to help keep the air moving and it really helps with the efficiency of the refrigerator. Uh, keeps things much cooler. I added a thermometer so that at a glance I can see how cold it is in the fridge without opening the fridge. Um, you can get like aquarium thermometers for that too. And I added a circulator fan on the inside to keep the air moving around so I don't have any cold or hot spots as much. I did an axle flip to gain lift because I put in a larger water tank that hung down lower. And I added sensors on the tank to be able to detect how much water I had without having to look under with a flashlight. I went with two 6 volt batteries in series to get the 12 volts needed and I've got a voltage meter inside uh, that I can push a button to activate as well as indicate the water level that's triggered by the pump. Uh, replace your crappy thermostat with a digital one and uh, that's really going to make a big difference in the hot cold swings and that really depends if you're using your heat. Um, we do. We camp right up through you know, late October. Uh, if we can and so these things are like you know eight or ten bucks so it's well worth it stc 1000 it's under a bunch of different manufacturer names but they're all the same 
Here's our cassette toilet. The uh, water level was always hard to know how much we had in there, so I just put a line on the back of it, and now I can see, just like a thermometer. That's it, and uh, I hope this helps you. Let me know if you have any other questions, and I'll be glad to help.